William Ford Gibson is credited with saying, the future is already here, it's just not very evenly distributed. Solar radiation management, cloud seeding, stratospheric aerosol injections, at the end of the day, it's really all the same thing, weather modification. Known plainly as chemtrails, and you don't have to call them that, the question becomes, do we want this kind of future? Take a moment to turn away from your smart device and look up at the skies the next time you see grid lane. I mean, really look. Something is clearly going on with these patterns. We're disconnected if we can't see the evidence alive in color. Let me just be candid here. These programs help explain an increasingly erratic climate and spikes of heavy metals in drinking water and soils. Planes didn't used to do this. This isn't regular. It isn't normal. There appears to be a great deal of experimentation using the skies as a laboratory and citizens as subjects. I'm not sure about you, but I haven't consented to testing or succumbed to the false conception that these measures will somehow fend off the effects of climate change. Actually, I'm of a completely contrary mindset. There is deep cognitive deception concerning geoengineering, and chemtrails are just stepping on the subject. Exacerbated allergies, chronic chest congestion, general acute respiratory distress. Next time one of these flares up, check to see if your skies resemble something like this. The point of this video is to both inform and remind. Inform those who are unaware and remind those who are aware to continue making this known. It's not easy to cohesively encapsulate the entirety of this subject, but if we really want to inspire change, we need to be more than spectators. Subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, share. Thanks for checking me out. Listeners and subscribers, thanks for tuning in. I hope your guys' holiday was great, that you folks went out there and did something interesting and stayed out of trouble. Uh, I know with uh, what happened with, what was it, Colin Kaepernick and that whole Nike thing, it, it's probably, some of you guys probably had a uh, some frustration going on there. I can't believe folks weren't able to recognize that psychological operation. It just so happens, hey, may, may, maybe Nike has an alibi on this one, okay? Uh, just so happens Nike's going to put out an American flag shoe the week of uh the fourth of july so maybe they have an alibi there but then colin kaepernick or the special interests behind him urges colin kaepernick to uh contact nike and say this is offensive and actually get, get it pulled and nike just is at his behest and says okay we, we we're going to not make all this money i mean could you imagine american flag shoe during the week of fourth of july i mean the money that they're basically saying no to so just at colin kaepernick's behest they say okay well we're gonna go do this and We'll, we'll listen to you, we'll pull the shoe, and we're going to frustrate a whole bunch of people in the, during the week of uh, the 4th of July. That was a psychological operation. It was a perfect storm. You know, what a coincidence. Uh, they have the shoe coming out, Colin Kaepernick phones them up, says, hey, this is offensive, and then they pull it right before 4th of July, gets everybody frustrated. Just throws more fuel on that civil unrest scenario I've been talking about, and other folks have been talking about as well. That's absolutely crazy. Anyway, here we are. Let's get <laughs> let's let's get to the matter at hand. And before we get into this, you have to understand. And some people have already, you know, got this figured out. So it's nothing groundbreaking. But this topic is just another one of those things that people are going to ballyhoo the hell out of because it's information that probably conflicts with their pre-programmed beliefs. Okay, you can lead you can lead a horse to water, uh, but you can't make them drink type thing. Okay, and for those people, the lights are on. Nobody's home. All right, they're out to lunch. They're out to breakfast, lunch, and dinner all the time. A steady diet of garbage. All right, but uh, let's go ahead and read here. Contrails are air travel's dirty secret. A new German aerospace center study shows the clouds formed in the wake of planes have an impact on the climate that's not being properly addressed. And this is so interesting. I'm going to show you a clip from a video I talked about before. It's, it's basically paraphrasing the same thing I said. Uh, I was basically saying, how can you talk about global warming and climate change and you're not even considering the chemtrail phenomena, okay? This goes right back to the heart of the chemtrails controversy. Let's go ahead and read this. 
Uh, air travel is predicted to increase in the coming years. The exhaust from planes uh, filling more of our skies with clouds known as contrails. These clouds are largely unaccounted for in climate policy and could triple the climate impact of air travel from 2006 levels by 2050, according to new research. Okay, it's interesting because they, they call it the exhaust from planes, but they call that condensation. So just like the exhaust from our cars, right, our tailpipes have particulates of chemicals in this, these trails that these airplanes leave behind from their exhaust also contain chemical particulates. So that's long for uh, chem trails. So chem trails for short, chemical trails left behind these airplanes impacting the environment and the health of individuals. That is what people in the chemtrail controversy have been talking about for years, yet they kept calling it condensation as if there's no chemical. And we're not even talking about the exhaust, um, just the exhaust from planes. They have uh, separate apparatuses altogether. Okay, But in a study published in Atmospheric Chemistry and Physics on Thursday, researchers from the German Aerospace Center's Institute for Atmospheric Physics detailed how they created four simulations to test the potential effects on the formation of clouds by airplane contrails. Hey, there's that word again. Uh, they accounted for increased air traffic, climate change, improvements in fuel efficiency, and decrease in soot emissions, okay? Chemical particulates, right? When you look at the sky and see those thin stripes, you don't think that contrails can have an impact, co-author Ulrich Birdhark said but they do. By 2050, air traffic is predicted to increase four times from 2006 levels. This could, according to the study, triple contrail cloud formation in the same time frame. Contrails, which are made of condensed water and freeze into ice clouds, trap heat in our atmosphere like a light blanket, as NASA describes them. This heat trapping is called radiative forcing. So my question is, have they always been, has this always just been condensation trails? Because if we look at Harvard, they say, well, what is geoengineering? Geoengineering refers to a set of emerging technologies that can manipulate the environment and partially offset some of the impacts of climate change. So basically what they're saying is their efforts for, for trying to deter the impacts of climate change are actually adding to the uh, effects of what they call global, global warming and things that are going on with our atmosphere. Okay, uh, Solar geoengineering in particular cannot be a replacement for reducing emissions or coping with a changing um, climate, yet it could supplement these effects. And geoengineering, that's just the umbrella term for everything that's going on. Harvard has had a long history of doing, uh, of doing experiments, right, of using these skies as laboratories, right, because Harvard scientists here begin experiments to block out the sun. And they're proposing the similar methods of utilizing um, aeros uh, stratospheric aerosol injections and injecting aerosols into the stratosphere to mitigate some of the effects of global warming. All right. And basically, that's what we're seeing right here. This uh, solar radiation management, you have balloons or airplanes put layers of chemicals into the sky so they can reduce some of these effects here. These are chemical trails. They're chemtrails. Why do they keep calling them contrails? I don't get it. Right. Cloud seeding. Here's something else. Right. Uh, a weather modification commonly known as cloud seeding, okay, here we go with geoengineering, weather modification, all this umbrella terminology, uh, is the application of scientific technology that can enhance a cloud's ability to produce precipitation. Weather, modifica uh, weather Modification Inc. is on the forefront of scientific technology to maximize water availability worldwide. So my question and the question of other people have long been, what could be the impacts of these experiments and every single one of these articles say we don't know what the future impacts of these could be but we're going to do it anyway right solar radiation um management stratospheric aerosol injection they're all, they're all the same thing this is all geoengineering this is the stuff that folks like myself have been talking about for years as a matter of fact let's see climate change global warming an incomplete conversation i did this the beginning of this year let's let's hear what i had to say um about this Climate change. So when people are talking about global warming and climate change, why aren't they including this in their analysis? Uh, could there be uh, derogatory uh, effects? It, could there be secondhand effects that we aren't expecting with this type of weather manipulation? Right. Solar radiation management is yeah, another form. It's the same thing that I was talking about when I heard when I heard this. 
that shows that these planes, uh, the chemicals coming from these planes can have an impact on Earth's climate. That's exactly what we're talking about. And also, they're completely leaving out the fact that when you spray aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, and a plethora of other chemicals, heavy metals into the sky, what goes up must come down. Could this also, I'm, I'm at, since I asked the question, even going back as far as two years ago, okay, this this is a video I did uh, back in 2017, July 21st, 2017, so almost two years now, I'm st I was still asking the same questions, and how long did it take for this to come out in mainstream media where they're saying, oh yeah, these things can actually have uh, an impact on our climate, so how many more years until it comes out that they say, oh yeah, all this, the stratospheric aerosol injections, the solar radiation management, the cloud seeding, the blocking out of uh, the sun, okay, geoengineering, all these chemicals, all these experiments, everything that they're doing, putting this into the sky, could this also be affecting our health? How many years is it going to be before they say, oh, uh, climate engineering science comes out to prove that it has detrimental health impacts on humans, our ecosystem, our biome, and everything else? You know, that's what we're looking at. I, I, I thought that was, I thought this was an amazing article. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I, I just highlighting the high points on this stuff. They go on to say the same thing I've been talking about for years. Uh, air traffic plays a big role. These are just condensation and the, the chemicals could in these condensation could uh, potentially interact with the environment in a complicated way that they weren't anticipating. That's what the opponents of chemtrails have been saying for the longest time. It's it's incredible that this comes out now. How long will it be until they come out with saying that these uh, geoengineering efforts are actually harming humans? Anyway, uh, California Carter signing off.